Good morning, Dr. Ritu. You can take over. Dr. Deepak and Dr. Ria, you can keep your cameras on. Right. Uh, sir, uh, you, you make me the presenter, then I can introduce the first speaker. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure and it's an honor to introduce the first speaker for this session today. He is Dr. Saptarshi uh, Mandal. Uh, he's a highly qualified and decorated, I would say, uh, both medical professional and artist. Uh, he joined AIMS in 1996. He is currently an associate professor of transfusion medicine and blood bank at Ames Jodhpur. Uh, like I said, he joined MBBS and did his MBBS from Ames, New Delhi, uh, starting 1996. He did his master's in biological sciences, MS, from Stanford University and a postdoctoral fellowship in the University of California, Davis. Residency in Clinical Pathology from University of Chicago. Fellowship in Blood Bank and Transfusion Medicine from the University of Chicago. Uh, he has two U.S. Board certifications. A diplomat, diplomate of the American Board of Pathology in Clinical Pathology, which is his specialty. And Blood Bank and uh, Transfusion Medicine, which is the super specialty. He has professionally been an active member of international committees, the American Association of Blood, Blood Banks, American Society for Actresses, scientific publications. His scientific publications include high impact journals, including the NEJM, and he has over 439 citations. Uh, he uh, is basically, he hails from West Bengal, uh, Uh, he uh, stood 12th in the CBSC uh, pre-medical test, 9th in the AIMS MBBS entrance, and he was also first, he stood first in the West Bengal joint entrance exam. He has won many academic and extra academic awards, uh, which include uh, 99 percentile in GRE, uh, biochemistry. Uh, he has several, several awards in transfusion medicine, international travel awards, and uh, also his students have been uh, awarded several times. As a child, he grew up in Calcutta and imbibed a lot of art and cultural training, uh, holding a fifth year degree in Tabla and also trained in painting at the Vichitra Art School. The great artist series books uh, were won as an award and uh, this inspired his future work. And uh, I have had the honor and pleasure of actually uh, seeing some of his work in various media. And he has experimented heavily in various media and he has excelled in all of them. At Ames, uh, he was the Auditorium Decoration Secretary, the Internal Publicity and Fine Art Company, uh, Fine Art uh, Co Secretary. He won arts events in many Delhi inter-college competitions like Pulse, the Lady Harding Festival, uh, etc. He judged a number of art events in his senior years. Uh, he was also a table tennis player. He did all the foyer and goalies along with his classmate, Vinay Maharajan, 
uh, as Rangoli partner from 1996 to 2001, which was the year he graduated. He performed all the alpanas and backdrops in several Saraswati pujas, again from 1996 to 2001. In 1999, he became the social and cultural secretary. In addition to Pulse and Infest, he has done a huge diversity of interim activities. He's the founder of five activity groups of clubs and co-founder or patron of several others as the cultural secretary from 1999 onwards. Uh, some of the art clubs that he founded was the Fine Art Club, he got space allocated in the hostel, assembled materials, took classes, hosted workshops and exhibitions. The dance club, again, he uh, got uh, arrangement for uh, their activities in the art room. The cine club, uh, Ames Delhi, uh, he got Ames Delhi to purchase its first multimedia projector. He also restarted the music club and the faculty mentorship program. During his years, he, was, he hosted many new additional cultural activities, including Spik Mackay. Uh, he uh, organized lectures by Dr. Kiran Seth from IIT Delhi, uh, moderated academics and art sections and Neem Hakim online forum uh, from 2003 to 2006. At Stanford, he was among the people who started Bengali Wikipedia. Uh, so he was one of the first five administrators. He also organized the Saraswati Puja in the Stanford campus in 2007. He won several national arts program awards at the University of Chicago annual art exhibitions. Presently, he's a faculty member uh, at uh, Ames Jodhpur. Uh, he's, uh, he mon uh, mentors the students art club at that institute. He's a member of the Cultural Committee, Student Welfare Committee, anti ragging Committee at Ames Jodhpur. He's also the editorial board member overseeing the arts section of the Ames Jodhpur magazine, Rohida. One of the designers of the Ames Jodhpur logo. He has designed the Ames Gorakhpur logo in addition. He has designed the cover for IAMM 2001 Microbiology Conference in Delhi. And the Amazonian Conference in New York is designed the logo for the ACBI Conference in 2014, the Biochemistry National Conference. He's designed several t-shirts. And like I said, he's dabbled in so many diverse media and excited in all of them. Uh, he's done rangolis, he's done sketches, uh, he's done watercolors, poster colors, and... Uh, he has painted on canvas, thermocol, wood. So he has used all types of media and excelled in all of them. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome him to this forum. And uh, I pass on the uh, honors to Dr. Dr. Saptarishi Mandal, who will deliver his talk now. And we will learn from him how art has impacted his life. Uh, and enriched it at the same time. Dr. Mandel, please. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm really thankful for the very nice uh, introduction uh, from Dr. Ritu, who's herself an accomplished artist and a professor, anatomy. And uh, I really thank the organizers, uh, Professor Saran and uh, Dr. Aditi, for giving me this opportunity. Um, so, um, so you all can see my screen, right? So here I uh, start with something which I, uh, when I was joining EMS, uh, just before the uh, EMS classes start in August and after the entrance is finished, there is this three month gap. So during that time, I made several uh, paintings and I carried one along with me when I came to Delhi. So this was one of those two that I carried. So uh, this here is, can you see this picture? This is a like on the left hand side, this is the whole picture on the right hand side. I have zoomed it in for you to see the, uh, I'm, I like doing hyper realistic work. So this was like scanned after five years of making it. So it became a little fade. But when my senior saw it, when I came to Ames, this whole mantra, which is written on this uh, cloth, piece of cloth called Namavali, 
It's a Manipuri dancer. And so I wrote, it's, it's a Manipuri script, which is exact same as Bangla. So it's actual scripts are written there. So every senior, they saw it and like uh, most of them couldn't believe that it was my painting. So here I was, I was a, like, uh, you know, I was from a uh, Bengal medium school and studied in English medium for just two years. And uh, I came straight to Ames Delhi. I hardly knew Hindi. And, uh, you know, during the, uh, during the senior junior interaction, which used to be quite compulsory in our time. Uh, so everybody used to ask me to give introduction in Hindi. And obviously my Hindi was uh, horrible. And so I used to take, uh, you know, refuge to like at least saying the neutral part, the easy part that, okay, I'm rank, blah, blah, rank number one in this Bengal and nine in Ames and blah, blah. But then after that, uh, I used to like, uh, quickly the question used to go to like, what are your hobbies? And I used to say, okay, I play Tabla and I'm an artist. So for many of them, I uh, drew sketches in the classrooms, like used to sometimes go to classroom with seniors and all. But those who were themselves uh, artists, they used to sometimes take me to their rooms and they wanted to actually see whether I can actually paint. So here, uh, this was uh, one of those seniors who actually offered me his color set. He had a student color set. Uh, and uh, uh, so he, uh, he actually offered me his color set and uh, he gave me a calendar that, uh, okay, if you are a painter, can you draw this? So here there was uh, a calendar which looked exactly like this. And this was a half of A4 sheet. And I made an exact replica of what was there in that calendar with watercolor. And he was really, like he, he was witnessing it at four in the night. And he was a very nice senior. He uh, didn't sleep off. He stayed awake every second of my, he watched every stroke that I gave. He even kept me asking that, how did you make this beak shiny? And uh, after I finished, he himself had a go at it and he made everything else quite perfect actually his only that his hornbill's horn was not shiny but he was a very supportive senior i must say and so that was uh, dr vishal kapoor who's a neonatologist in australia now and this is another uh, senior uh, dr gagan kumar and uh, i wish he was here with us but he's working this weekend and uh, i had requested him to join us so this is another work that uh, i i don't actually i never remember that i did this work but when i contacted him for this program he sent me some of his work and he sent me this one and I was wondering what it is. Then he told me that I sketched it. So it was like, he gave me some material which I think might be charcoal. So it's a paw of a bear. And I um, sketched it during the senior junior interaction period. And so uh, it was in our time, it used to be quite intense senior junior interaction. You know what I mean? So, and Gagu was, Gagu was very, uh, Gagu was an expert of senior junior interaction in those days. And but Gagu himself was an accomplished artist. And you know what, I uh, like Gagu and uh, all these seniors, they wanted to see more of my work. So when I next uh, went home, I did bring some of my childhood work, which was not very well preserved, but and never framed. So here was some like uh, one of my favorite artists, Albert Durer. He is one of the Renaissance masters. Um, this is a pen and ink from my class seventh. This is another pen and ink from my class seven. And uh, this middle one is again a, a watercolor. Uh, sorry, this right side one is a watercolor. Left is pen and ink. Here again, the middle one is a watercolor. The right one is also watercolor, but that was in class nine. And the one on the left most, that is oil pastel in class five. So these were like my seniors, they used to see this and they used to really, uh, like I, I was glad, I was happy to get a good seniors who used to be very supportive. And so very quickly I was appointed as the auditorium decoration co-secretary without any delay. And I was given the job of, I was given the human job of beating somebody like Gagu. So the previous years you see on the right upper corner, you see the Aladdin and the right lower corner, the dragon. This, this dragon is a thermocol dragon and this, uh, um, this warrior along with the castle, these were all made the year before by Gagu and Gagu is Dr. Gagan Kumar who right now is an intensivist in the US and um, along with Dr. Sambit Mandal and Dr. Sahu. And so uh, I was given the job of beating what uh, was that Aladdin in that place. In place of that Aladdin, what I made was something of similar size. Uh, it was, I think, around 45 thermocol pieces joined together, uh, one and a half stories high and wider than the height. So this is the War of Constantinople made out of uh, distemper on thermocol pieces. And the same year, uh, so uh, the, uh, every pulse has a rangoli in the fire, right? And that was the first time I actually... I'd never seen a Rangoli myself, but my sister was in IIT Kharagpur and she was part of the 
team of Rangoli, uh, people who made Rangoli there, and they used to make brilliant Rangolis in illumination contest for IIT Kharagpur. And so they had shown me some of their Rangolis, which they had used shades. So I uh, introduced the shades here because before us, the Rangolis they used to make were very simple ones. So, uh, but I had never done a Rangoli myself before, but my classmate Vinay Mahajan, he was an expert in Rangoli, but he was, uh, like I was better at uh, painting and he was better at Rangoli and he was, uh, he knew Rangoli, which I initially didn't. And then we exchanged expertise and he became a great collaborator and uh, we exchanged our expertise. So this was, a, this was the first Rangoli that I ever saw and made. So this is a magician and you see the magic one. So do you imagine in those days, there was no internet, there was no soft copy, there was no uh, cell phone. Uh, let alone Android, and there was a postcard size picture on a thin crumpled piece of paper, and we had a blow up uh, for black and white photocopy, the biggest that our photocopy machine could blow, and from that we had used a grid to dry it quickly, and uh, the color we had was not Rangoli colors actually, uh, this was Gulal, which cannot be spread by hand. So though Vinay was a Rangoli expert, but he couldn't spread this, even he couldn't spread this, so we had to use a chani and we had to use our uh, alternative techniques and so uh, this was our first Rangoli. And since I came to the topic of Rangoli, let me show you a few more of our Rangolis in the next few years, how our Rangoli evolved. By the way, the seven days of uh, before Pulse, we had P-Wave also, so I had to practice for P-Wave. And uh, there was no time to take a rest. And I had to make the Rangoli uh, the last day. And the day before, I was making the War of Constantinople. So last seven days before the Pulse, I didn't sleep uh, off the records. So I ended up missing my train home. I was not planning to attend Pulse. I didn't know what Pulse was. So I was, I was going home actually after the first day, after, after just beginning of Pulse. So anyway, that's, that was the first Pulse. And uh, next year, uh, so you see the Mother Teresa, which we made the next year. So interestingly, we were planning, uh, me and Vinay by then uh, had become uh, very good collaborators. And uh, we were planning to make a, a huge rangoli of, of uh, world's best uh, horse painters, uh, one of the big, uh, famous painting in which a lion has attacked a horse. There's a golden colored horse and there is a brown lion biting on the neck of the horse and the horse is in pain. So you can actually see the emotion of the horse. And we actually started with the horse and we had got the emotion in. In those days, there was no camera I and mean, very few people had camera. There was analog camera, only no digital camera, obviously. So camera people used to take snap when people used to come as an audience when the pulse started. So halfway between that work at around 3, 3.30 in the night, we went to uh, the central cafeteria to have a uh, cold drink and we came back and the book was gone. And obviously we didn't have a backup uh, because like, you know, we just had a black and white uh, photocopy, but the color book with the color was gone. So we, we had we had only like uh, four or five hours left and we had the whole fire. So we had to clean up that Rangoli and we had to make a fresh one and that color all heaped up. So the Rangoli color was gone. So we had to invent a new material. So what we did is we held a skelter and we got some suji from some senior in the hostel. Uh, or maybe somebody got the shop open. But somehow we got some suji to our hand and we mixed gulal and we mixed actually the indigo blue into the gulal. And uh, so somehow we managed to make Mother Teresa who had just passed away. So she became our theme. And so this is a suji rangoli. So Vinay thought uh, suji rangoli will catch chitti, I mean ank. Uh, and so he had put a Lakshman Rekha of, of this uh, insecticide around it. But later it was attacked by people walking over it because it was... People thought it's a painting. People never realized it was a Rangoli. Luckily, it was Suji which stuck uh, because it was hygroscopic. But so this was our second Rangoli. And our third Rangoli was uh, this. Um, do you guys know there's a sandstone sculpture? Nowadays, it's not so prominent. But in our days, it used to be a, a pristine yellow uh, sandstone sculpture of a couple with a stethoscope and green hand. So we made Rangoli of that statue the uh, next year when. Um, when our uh, classmates uh, started a new uh, endeavor called Prayatna. So here is the year next. Uh, so in this particular year, the Rangoli, I, I spent about four or five hours making the sketch. And then uh, my friend Vinay, he helped my juniors, uh, uh, Prashant Mani and Chaladat Kalanka to finish this uh, Rangoli. And so, and this was uh, uh, the left hand side was the last Rangoli I made. Uh, this was the 2001 pulse. So here it's a mixture medium. The, the more intricate part is uh, marble dust and the relatively crude part is sawdust. And so here uh, I merged two, three different ideas from two, three books. So on the top, there are thunder gods who are uh, getting angry and they're throwing thunder. And the thunder is eliciting a sandstorm. So at the bottom, the part which got cut, there's a sandstorm. 
A sandstorm is taking shape of a three-headed horse, which is, uh, uh, you can see the three heads. So here uh, in these uh, big rangoli, we needed more help. And so we called other artists of our class. And Dr. Aditi also happens to be an artist. And she's an excellent calligraphist, the best calligraphist of our time. But she was also an artist and she helped us uh, uh, completing the uh, many of the large rangoli, larger rangolis. And uh, on the right hand side, there's just an example of a small rangoli I did at another institution. It's Raja Ravi Varma's Lady with the Lamb. So, uh, so because of my art activities and uh, my musical activities, I uh, used to also play tabla, etc. So I was uh, elected the Social and Cultural Secretary in 1999. And one of my dream was to start a fine arts club. So I, uh, I, got, uh, I was lucky to get support from Professor P.K. Dave, who was the event director and an Emsonian himself. And uh, Dr. Maheshwari, you can see on the left hand side, Dr. Maheshwari with the Caesar in his hand. So we, we did have the, you know, uh, Fita uh, Katnevala event, uh, though the room was very humble. There was no nothing in the room. It was just a freshly painted double room in the first floor of uh, Hostel One. We just had a, a pin board and we had a mattress and we had Almira. That's it. And we had dumped all our art material. And the reason I chose this is because recreation room was always there. But I spoke to everybody who was interested in art club, but nobody was willing to go all the way to the recreation club frequently to do any activity. They could go there only for a party. So I uh, convinced Dr. Dave that we need a room. And he was very generous to give us a room. It was a double room which went away next year because uh, probably nobody uh, nobody thought that it was necessary. And But the half of the clubs also went away after the room was gone because we had a lot of material which we created. We generated a lot of art material, a lot of art products. They all got uh, scattered and uh, probably stolen after uh, the next year. So we uh, in this room, this was a humble room, but we did a lot of activities we used to have speak making meetings, we used to have dance club classes, we used to have art classes, we used to take turns. Uh, Shamish Shimar used to teach origami. Um, Chicago L, my classmate, used to teach uh, software making. Uh, another uh, junior of VCM village, Ananya, taught uh, clay modeling. And I uh, taught sketching and painting. We sometimes call the faculty kids also for these classes. And one of my friends, uh, to be wife, later uh, became an artist herself, also uh, um, uh, like I was mentor, I mentored a little bit of her hard work. And so we did have uh, both professionals and non-professionals interact with us. And we had a lot of art activities in this room, which was uh, like right within the heart of the hostel. So here, are, so you see these pictures on the left-hand side where Dr. Maheshwari is there. So there is this pin board. So this, uh, this is a chalk on paper, uh, both are chalk on paper. So this one on the left-hand side, Jackie Chan chalk on black paper. This is actually my childhood work. Uh, which I was carrying and I had put up on the pin board. But this one I did just for this particular event. This was a uh, chalk uh, on a full sheet, full art paper sheet, not a great sheet, it was probably pastel paper sheet. Um, so this was Albert Durer's uh, hand of an apostle uh, that I made uh, with a chalk and pencil. So uh, this uh, hand of an apostle uh, happens to be probably Albert Durer's brother who worked as a minor to support Durer to go to the art academy. And so as a minor, he had broken his fingers. And so his fingers are disfigured. So it's not exactly my fault. Uh, but on the left hand side, you see a six inch pencil copy, uh, which I made as a, um, as a uh, card, greetings card. On the right hand side, you see a six feet. Uh, so if you see on the right hand side, you see insert of a event that was taking place in another institute. And this was actually a teaching whiteboard where uh, teaching took place. So this was a whiteboard marker. So this was the same thing that I did in three different mediums. This was chalk and pencil, this was just pencil, and this was um, whiteboard marker, all different sizes. This is six feet versus the other one is six inch. So uh, since, um, uh, okay, so let me switch to another topic. So uh, from 96 to 2001, we did another event regularly in Hostel 7 TV room. Do you guys still use the TV room for Saraswati Puja? So it was started probably in somewhere in 1975 or so. And this tradition was still going on after 20 years or more. And I was taught by one of uh, my uh, senior, Sujan Rafiul Kabir, how to do Saraswati Puja. And so for the next six years, I was the in charge of Saraswati Puja. And so, I, uh, so I'm so i starting the reverse sequence here. This was the last one that I saw. I was in Ballavgarh as an intern and I came back. In the other Saraswati Pujas, I used to take the whole afternoon and night to decorate the room. But here I had only the night left. And so I had made this cap uh, swan, which uh, some of you 
Uh, I don't know if any of the teachers are around, they might remember. The uh, Saraswati Puja tradition still continues. It's a yearly event, uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know what they use, of course, in the hostels, but they, uh, the students get together and conduct the Saraswati Puja every single year. And since I have interjected, let me say that your folded hands and Jackie Chan image is work par excellence. It's, it's uh, a real, a true artist's work. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your uh, kind uh, praise. So uh, I'm, I'm also thankful to all my, uh, like, there were so many teachers who used to be involved in so many levels of Saraswati Puja. So what used to happen is that, you know, in those days, uh, even though the, like, Saraswati Puja um, did not cost much, but still like arranging the mic and, and, and getting so much food. Actually, we fed the whole institute in the ground floor, so hostel seven miss. On the first floor, we had the puja. And also in this, in front of the goddess, we used to have the cultural program. So I used to be there up all night making the decoration. And then I used to make that uh, uh, alpana for the, uh, for the puja. And then I used to go uh, like get dressed. And then I used to come back and then I used to um, I used to also take part in the cultural program upstairs while downstairs there used to be the um, food and all. So you can see in the backdrop, these are all huge watercolors. So this is a, uh, like there used to be the watercolor paper rolls which could cover the whole wall. And every year I used to make a different, different painting. So for example, you can see some of my, two of my friends standing in front of another painting. So this is the this sea and the cloud. This is another year Saraswati Puja. I actually don't have the picture of the actual Puja. I had made some swans and all. I used to go to the library and hunt for pictures of the swan and picture of the lotus. Let me see if I can, yeah, here. You can see this is a thermocol lotus and this is a realistic lotus. And so obviously I used to need to see some real pictures and there was no internet, there was no cell phone. So I used to go hunt in the library. Sometimes I used to go hunt in the nearby markets to get some art books and all. So this book was from the library and I actually surveyed the whole uh, library to look for books. So this is a uh, Saraswati Puja where I have scrolls of knowledge and confluence of knowledge is where Saraswati, the goddess Saraswati sits. So, uh, and for many of these events, I made the uh, made the invitation card. And our uh, our uh, our uh, teachers like uh, Professor Maulik in pharmacology, Professor Ghosh in uh, uh, physiology, uh, Professor um, Sinha in biochemistry, Dr. T. S. Rai in anatomy, and uh, Dr. Dr. Gupta in pathology. Many of them they used to be very uh, like supportive of these events, and they actually. Like all these events could take place because they used to give uh, not only generous uh, contributions, but they actually gave, uh, they actually came in and participated. You guys know that uh, Dr. Piyush Shani and Dr. N.K. Mehra, all these people, they came down and they interacted. Uh, Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Chandrakant Pandav, Dr. Anurag Shivastha, uh, Dr. Bimal Das. Do you guys know that Dr. Um, Dr. Datta Gupta plays the Dholak and Dr. Uh, Bimal Das can play the flute and the uh, guitar? So the, uh, like we used to get to know the teachers, Dr. Nirja Vatla, Dr. Uh, Acharya, Dr. V.K. Paul. Dr. V.K. Paul's children used to play the tabla. One of them played the tabla and one of them sang. So all these events used to make our own posters. So like this was a poster when I was a social culture secretary. Devu Chaudhuri was a sitarist. I made the poster by hand. It was a real poster. And then I made the Saraswati Puja card. That was a ballpoint pen. These are actually just some quick uh, sketches for some other event posters. And so these are two uh, two T-shirts that I designed uh, when I was at Ames, and both of these were printed on back of T-shirts. So these are some of my sketches. By the way, so for making sketch, I had a preference of photographs. So though I had good patience of making people sit in front of me, but the people who posed, they couldn't sit still. So and if people can't sit still, I can uh, make the face look exactly the same. So like, and if the person is moving, then it's even more challenging. So generally, I like, for example, for several of my classmates, I had taken their pictures. And in those days, when there was no digital camera, analog pictures were quite rare. So I had some only 10, 15 pictures of my classmates and I had made their sketches. And uh, these were very small sketches, actually, maybe like uh, uh, very small, like smaller than my thumb. Each of these sketches are very small. So in one page, there were like many, many sketches. So this is just a blow up of two. Uh, so you see Dr. Aditi, who, whom you know. And this is Dr. Varundi, he's in PGH Chandigarh. And when I was making Varun, the two teeth became larger. And so just for some fun, I made some others also look funny. Like, for example, this was Sushil Gunde, I used to call him Gunde. And this was Anup Kutikat. Uh, he, uh, so I just for fun, I put some funny stuff. So this is, uh, these are other classmates. Dr. Punita, Dr. Minakshi, Dr. Uh, 
uh, Puneet. So these are this is the same Puneet a couple of years later when she was getting married to Priyank. So this was a sketch that I uh, made right in front of uh, Priyank when he was waiting to get married the next morning. And by the next morning, I could color only half of it, and I gifted it to them, and it made its way to the AOA magazine after two years. And so uh, we had a very close knit group of friends, and our friends like uh, they used to be real support. Like even though half of them didn't do any painting, but they used to like splash some color on the wall and used to like have uh, stress relieving sessions just before exams. This is one of such sessions in the hostel uh, in between in the junction in the landing between the stairs. These are some of my work after leaving Ames. Uh, I did some. Uh, some experiments uh, here. Uh, this is a microbiology conference uh, uh, front page. This is the Emsonia of America conference cover. So this was edited by Dr. Gurdiv Sidhu, whom I exchanged almost 400 academic emails uh, in one year. Uh, when I was at Stanford, the research needed some pathologist inputs. And so I found him as a very good uh, research mentor at a distance. And so he also happened to be a great photographer himself. So because of my dimension as an artist, I created an extra bond with Dr. Sidhu, even though those 400 emails were mostly academic, but we created a great bond and he offered me to be the cover page illustrator for that conference. So this was a um, 50th anniversary of AIMS. So he really acknowledged me in three places in that particular magazine and I was really grateful for that. And so, uh, so these are some of my other watercolors in other institutes, left one in the University of Chicago, right one in another institute in Bangalore. And so, and in Stanford, I also happened to do the Saraswati Puja. You can see one of my paintings at the back, which was Alpana. And we were not allowed to draw on the wooden floor and we were not allowed to, you know, uh, draw anything on the wall. We had to actually repaint the wall because some there was some stain on the wall. So this is, uh, so this, and uh, Dr. Sivar Prashad Rattodhuri was, uh, was my postdoc mentor who actually uh, took me to University of uh, California, Davis. So he came back to Stanford for doing the Saraswati Puja and I came with him to organize the Saraswati Puja in 2007. And after the postdoc, I joined the University of Chicago uh, as a uh, former residency and fellowship. And then I came back to India um, and uh, I am currently in Ames Jodhpur, but uh, Ames Jodhpur logo I had contributed partially. But another logo which uh, I have contributed almost uh, uh, very largely is Ames Gorakhpur logo. And here you can see, the, like I'm really thankful to my uh, director, uh, Professor, uh, Sanjeev Mishra, who was also the then director of Ames Gorakhpur, he actually gave me a lot of very detailed input of how to, like how he wanted the logo. And I had to go through literally, like I made 100 different versions of 100 different designs, many of them very different from each other. And finally, this one we boiled down. So I had actually hand draw these snake heads. And to make the snake not look scary, I have made the snakes, snake heads look metallic and smiley. Do you guys see the snake heads? So this is uh, drawn on Adobe Photoshop. This was one of my first venture on digital art. And I was really amazed at the aesthetic uh, capacity of a leader uh, physician, like our director. He was a leader physician, he was not himself an artist. But the amount of aesthetic guidance he gave for both M's Jodhpur logo and this logo was amazing. And I realized to be a great leader, you should have sense in all dimensions, including aesthetics. So this is uh, my, so I've, uh, uh, now I'm just showing one glimpse of some other artists who influenced me during my time. This is another senior, uh, Nikhil Minan, the one best senior, he made, these are wall in the hostel. So these are charcoal work on the walls of the hostel. Uh, this is uh, my wife, Dr. Ashmita, I'm lucky to have another physician uh, artist as my wife. And she was the one who introduced me to abstract art. And so like this impressionistic art was her work at Chicago when she was recovering from, from a hand injury. She, this was her first venture into dry pastel. So she, and it won a first prize. And uh, on the left side, uh, that's a portrait of my niece. And that also won an award. So I'm, uh, she's an MD from Ames New Delhi. So she's also an Emsonian. So I'm lucky to have an Emsonian physician artist uh, who has helped me expand my horizons because she's, she's intrinsically an artist and uh, I'm uh, really grateful. Uh, so we, we collaborate a lot. And here is uh, some examples of Ames Jodhpur Art Club. So in Jodhpur Art Club, we also have Saraswati Puja and a lot of other activities. So here is uh, some of my team and uh, they do uh, all kinds of different activities, all kinds of experimental media. And uh, these are, this is uh, one of my uh, first uh, artist mentees who had done the first few rumbles uh, on campus. And then, uh, um, and then it was taken over by another. Uh, this is a nursing student, uh, Kavita Suthar and her part, Rangoli partner, Saroj. And, you see, like, uh, I inspired them to do, try some realistic rangolis, and you see this heart, the shining effect. 
So this is uh, where I stop and I uh, take questions uh, or I move over to Dr. Yeah. Ritu. Yeah, actually, I think we'll do the question answer session at the end once both the speakers have spoken. But let me say this, uh, Dr. Saptrashi, uh, each and every slide, each and every picture, each and every sketch and painting and rangoli and backdrop that you have presented in your presentation uh, made us want more and uh, made us left us speechless with wonder uh, because uh, they are so realistically done. They, they look like pictures and moving pictures at that. And your sketches uh, capture faces and expressions uh, just like photographs. In fact, they catch expressions even better than photographs. Particularly your uh, sketches of your batchmates, they are absolutely wonderful. They are frozen moments of time. Let me say that they are one. This is wonderful art. And in the beginning, uh, you called me an artist, but after looking at all this work, I know what a genuine artist is. I am at best a person for, uh, who does art for a hobby and sketches a little or maybe paints a little. But uh, your work is truly exceptional, and we are really. Uh, honored to have uh, witnessed some of your artistic moments. Thank you very much. Um, I really liked your art. So maybe at the end you can, uh, at the end when we have some sharing of some yeah, sessions. Yeah, well, that's an amateur art. Cons uh, looking at this, this is a very professional stuff. In fact, this is as good as a professional artist would produce. Uh, I don't know where you found the time uh, uh, to uh, pursue so many interests to excel academically and still uh, excel in uh, various artistic media. Uh, I am really uh, amazed at your uh, prolific output over the years. Uh, Thank you very much. It really means a lot to get this from you as an artist. No, it's well deserved, Dr. Sapsushi. Uh, I will now take this opportunity to welcome our second guest, uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar, uh, who I had the opportunity uh, to interact with, although I don't have many memories, but uh, with interact with uh, as a teacher or, a, or a, one can say learning facilitator using the lingo of the present times because he entered AIMS in 2010 and I've been here since 2003. So he's one of the batches I have taught uh, anatomy to. Uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar uh, recently completed his residency in dermatology from PGI Chandigarh, which is another uh, very reputed institute. Uh, he hails from a small town in the Hindi heartland. And he describes himself as extremely introverted. And the art uh, made that change in his life where he was able to expand his work friend circle and also uh, use some of the time that was part of his work that day. Uh, when he joined AIMS, the unfamiliar environment of AIMS found him struggling to blend in and he withdrew to his hostel room. And in his hostel room, uh, his uh, walls became his canvas and art became his release. He slowly came to be the artist of the batch. Uh, we will now hear him speak and we will see some of his work and realize how art totally transformed him in terms of the number of friends he made, which uh, probably without having the support of this medium, he may not have. And the kind of enriching interactions he had with his batchmates, his seniors and juniors over the years. Uh, learning to experiment from ambigrams to rangoli colors, uh, from drawing cartoons for protests to handling the position of the fine arts secretary, uh, he has believed that art has kept him sane. He describes uh, this fact that art has kept him sane and art has also helped him to uh, broaden his horizons beyond his hostel room uh, where he began. Uh, never the one to take the beaten track. His journey will surely leave you with a satisfied smile. And now let's witness his artistic journey. Uh, and I hand over to you, Dr. Deepak Kumar. Uh, please start your talk. Good morning, everyone. So this 
Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Deepak from a Ames 2010 batch. First of all, I want to thank everyone uh, to give me a chance uh, to interact here uh, about my art experiences. <coughs> so uh, I joined Ames in 2010. At first, it was a little difficult to uh, blend in with new people and new environment. So I used to uh, I used to feel like I'm uh, I am falling behind, and uh, uh, in this regard, art helped me a lot. So uh, initially, I used to draw uh, in my hostel room. So uh, 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 from the uh, from uh, from the novel *Engine and Demon*, I got the inspiration to uh, make ambigrams. So I make the ambigram for my uh, name on my hostel uh, rooms uh, door, and uh, there were a few uh, other ambigrams also. Uh, like this is my whole name, uh, Deepak Kumar. And, Dr. Uh, Deepak, I think you need to share your screen. We cannot see it. Uh, I'm unable to share this screen. Uh, earlier, your screen was shared when uh, uh, when uh, Professor Ritu was talking. You had shared your screen. It was working at that time. Can we uh, project his presentation? Uh, he may have uh, mailed his presentation. Can we project his presentation? Can we can see? Dr. Deepak? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I apologize uh, for the technical slag. We are just fixing it. Please. Uh, so uh, I'll show my artwork uh, later. So uh, uh, so initially I used to draw uh, ambigram. Uh, just excuse me for a minute. Dr. Pratap, I think he's not the presenter. Maybe that's why he's not able to share screen. No, he yes. is the presenter. Yes. He is the, he is the presenter. Yes, please continue, Dr. Deepak. Uh, uh, we can project his uh, artwork at the end, and uh, right now we can uh, just speak. Go ahead. Huh. Uh, so, uh, I got I got inspiration for Ambigram from the uh, uh, novel Angel. And uh, I got the inspiration for the ambigram from the uh, novel Angels and Demons, and I uh, drew some ambigram uh, and made uh, some ambigram for the for my friends. This is uh, Nadir, and uh, uh, I also draw uh, ambigram for Ames and uh, uh, for the Pulse 2013. I made this T-shirt uh, 
painted this t-shirt and gifted to my friend sister uh, and i made this uh, logo of aims pulse on the backdrop of 2012 uh, uh, pulse so uh, after that i got uh, a recognition uh, in the uh, hostel and got uh, confidence uh, about my art and uh, later in second year uh, there was a protest made uh, i made few cartoons for the protest also uh, here are some uh, they are, uh, they were made in like fifth, uh, 10 to 15 minutes when we were protesting and we pasted uh, in in the campus mm. uh, after that in 2013 uh, i regained my confidence and uh, my batchmate offered me the post of uh, 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 fine arts secretary in 2013 i was reluctant about it because uh, i was not sure if i could handle the leadership uh, but i took the post and it was a life changing experience for me uh, before it uh, in 2012 i was a co fine art co secretary and we made uh, this rangoli in 2012 so uh, before it uh, we never drew a rangoli and in our team no one knows how to no one knew how to draw the rangoli and uh, uh, and uh, we were uh, at first uh, uh, was uh, were not sure how to do it uh, but in the end it got uh, it uh, it was fine and uh, i got the chance to uh, draw the background of this rangoli and uh, 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 in this rangoli i was just standing and uh, sprinkling the color without uh, any uh, 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 and uh, without uh, any knowledge how to merge the colors but in the end uh, it uh, was good uh, after that uh, this was uh, uh, 2012 pulse rangoli and uh, Uh, it was done by just two people me and melin uh, most of the work was done by two people uh, cause uh, in our uh, art team uh, other people were in the uh, pva pva dance and uh, they were uh, practicing for it uh, so uh, we took most of the time in making the face uh, face of the rangoli and the hard part was uh, uh, making the flames so we called our uh, intern a senior uh, lakshmi and uh, Uh, she uh, drew it and uh, after that in 2000 uh, and also uh, in 2012 i uh, we made this backdrop most of the statues in the uh, backdrop uh, were made by me and during this time uh, we used to uh, uh, call uh, juniors uh, to uh, uh, pose for the uh, statues and even we used to tell them to uh, lie uh, lie down and uh, we used to outline them to make the uh, uh, all the uh, statues so uh, and in 2013 uh, when i was the uh, fine art uh, secretary we made this uh, rangoli in the uh, uh, in fest 2013 so uh, i uh, i told all my uh, team members that uh, you can uh, sprinkle you can do colors in uh, whatever way you want and uh, i'll correct it and they were uh, taking their own time uh, in doing it and like this uh, volcano part was uh, done by uh, my junior sora badpujar and he uh, took almost uh, all the time in doing all the uh, uh, all the time in making this volcano and also a uh, lot of my friend uh, came uh, to help me in this and uh, they colored uh, other uh, like lay, they sprinkled the colors in this and, and in uh, 2013 pulse uh, we made this rangoli at that time my brother was admitted so uh, like i was stressed and the uh, uh, background part was not good but it turned out good and uh, after that 
and this is my uh, favorite artwork this is the backdrop for uh, uh, p wave uh, 2013 so uh, like uh, the uh, main focus for uh, for this uh, was to keep the reference point so i outlined it uh, like single handedly and uh, uh, then uh, told my uh, other uh, team members that uh, you can paint in whatever way you uh, way you want so even uh, like they poured uh, uh, this uh, black uh, like a uh, lot of people have painted uh, this part and uh, whatever mistakes they made i corrected in the night uh the gravity the graffiti i have made in this uh, uh, backdrop the skeleton one, uh, the skull one so it was like uh, uh so lot of people wanted uh, uh this uh, uh skull that uh, they told me that uh, we want to cut this and want to paste in their uh, paste it in their host, uh, hostel room uh so i kept this backdrop for 3 to 4 years tried to sell it but was unable to do it and uh, after that uh, uh, my juniors also called me for uh, making this portrait when i was in intern uh, internship and uh, uh, they wanted to make, make the portrait of the uh, uh, of uh, my junior uh, shreya on the backdrop uh so uh, they called me to uh, make this portrait so it took me two days uh, to complete it and uh, after that i painted uh, some of uh, my uh, uh, walls of uh, my uh, french room and this was one of the paint one of the uh, painting and this was the door of my uh, neighbor he was a uh, manuvan and uh, uh, in internship also i got chance to uh, 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 judge few events when they called me to judge the tattoo uh, tattoo making event so uh, i made these tattoos uh, she is dr riya and uh, these are other she is uh, other tattoos uh, other than that uh, there are uh, few sketches uh, mostly i do pencil sketches so uh, this is my uh, batchmate ankit so i used a uh, uh, new smudge uh, like i never used to smudge uh, sketch uh, uh, my sketches so i tried smudging in this so uh, i used cloth uh, for the smudging uh, uh, clo- uh, cloth and the uh, pencil at the pencil to smudge so it turned out uh, like uh, quite realistic and uh, there are other sketches and during my ambiguous time she is uh, my batchmate nikita uh, and uh, in during my uh, um, residency i made a sketch for my batchmates and uh, uh, this sketch uh, it looks you know, totally like a, just project the previous one please it looks totally like a photograph nobody can you actually caught uh, that moment in time all their expressions and beautiful it really looks like a photograph and uh, they uh, i used to uh, use a uh, pen also as a medium so uh, she is my bat- uh, md uh, batchmate uh, and <laughs> please continue dr deepak i think it's i think he is having technical issues again you have captured the 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 texture so beautifully like look at the jeans the jeans has got wrinkles uh, where it got tight on the skin and so he is like with such economy of strokes he has captured the character of that like kata hua jo jeans hai wo chipka hua hai bilkul matlab it's really in our previous discussion dr mandel you had uh, actually uh, elaborated there are there are two types of techniques either the uh, outline form and this i think is a, a more outline than 
than yes. uh, light and shade, right? It, it has both actually. It's, it's a 50-50 almost. Yeah, 50-50, yes. Dr. Deepak, we cannot hear you. Please continue. We can see your screen. I think your audio is, yeah, now it's fine. Please continue. Uh, so this is also, uh, uh, this is also a pen sketch, uh, color pen sketch. And uh, uh, shading was done with pencil. And uh, uh, some other sketches are, uh, this is this is a random pen sketch uh, I was making when uh, uh, during my MD exams, and uh, uh, she's my sister. I made pen sketch. Uh, uh, this is totally uh, like uh, done with pen uh, without any uh, like use of pencil. And, uh, uh, this is a pencil. Uh, I uh, wanted to make a realistic uh, pen sketch, so I. Uh, so, and this was the tattoo uh, made by me in first year during our infest. And, uh, and some, uh, and uh, recently I uh, uh, started this, uh, like I, uh, I started drawing, I started painting and writing poems on the, on my paintings. This is one of the, one of this painting and uh, I had one more sketch and uh, first I used to uh, I sketch uh, and then write a poem or a, a story on the uh, uh, painting and sketch so these are uh, the pen sketch and this is also a pen sketch I tried to make a sketch of our batchmate but uh, I left it uh, like uh, in between uh, just made a sketch of two of my batchmates and I uh, uh, like uh, uh, I tried watercolor also. So, but a watercolor and acrylic paints uh, uh, is I, I'm not good in it. So, but like this is excellent. You have got an excellent glow uh, in the in the leg. It's actually beautiful. The sun is glowing in the leg, and you see I'm, the glow. It's so. The color composition also is well composed, very wonderfully composed. Uh, uh, you are good at it. Mostly, uh, these are other pen sketches, and uh, this is a pencil sketch of my batchmate. Uh, other sketches are. This is also a pen uh, sketch, and shading was done with pencil. So, uh, uh, so these are my these these are my artworks. It helped me a lot in uh, like gaining my confidence during my ambiguous uh, years, and uh, like uh, and helped me to make a, a lot of uh, friends in the hostel. And uh, so, it was uh, kind of a good friend to me. And. Your artwork is exceptional. Your portfolio is a testament to your abilities in every medium, I would say. Both are speakers. We have been privileged to witness some exceptional artwork, totally. And uh, now I think uh, uh, the speakers may take some questions. Uh, our student moderator, Dr. Ria, uh, will put forward some questions and then we'll have an open house wherein the audience can also ask questions. Over to you, Dr. Nia. Uh, uh, so it was a delight to listen to both of you, Dr. Deepak and Dr. Saprashi. Uh, it was amazing to you know, have a tiny sneak peek into your lives and your UG days through your paintings. And um, Dr. Saptarshi, your hyper-real artistic style renders a uh, lifelike quality to your paintings. And uh, as and Dr. Deepak, your ambigrance, I'm sure it would 
pose a tough competition even to the illuminati artists that we had in angels and demons uh, so uh, now we would uh, take questions uh, from the audience uh, so uh, uh, so we'll uh, uh, so uh, we have pooja uh, saying to dr um, akshay uh, that uh, me uh, she wants to ask if uh, a sir would ever consider taking um, uh, art as a full time career in the future and uh, uh, why or why not and the same question also goes to dr deepak would you like to take up art as a full time career sometime later <laughs> so uh, let me uh, take my turn so i uh, must say that uh, even though art is a very deep passion for me but my first love is still medicine and science and i think art and science are so deeply intertwined i can't separate them from my life they are both very very integral part of my life both and i can't leave either one or the either i think i will continue to do both and uh, so even though i am so called full time medical person but anyway i'm um, but i but uh, medicine and uh, science is something which uh, which is like uh, which i which i so deeply uh, i matlab what i mean is that uh, somehow uh, my art has in most retirement plans you can consider art as a full time career right now i think uh, dr mandal is a clinical pathologist i am an anatomist now anatomy and pathology are two subjects where you can actually combine your passion for your profession with your passion for art in amazing ways these are the two subjects with you enough uh, length enough breadth to explore because you require art skills uh, in both these subjects like in no other uh, maybe medical subject Uh, I mean, uh, but uh, i feel that pathology and anatomy are both subjects where uh, they offer you a lot of scope for uh, expanding even professionally your artistic skills uh, ma'am i absolutely agree with you that way but uh, but uh, all said and done still uh, i think my identity is first i am a doctor and a medical person and my love for science is Uh, is is my first love and uh, art is something that i really deeply love but i can't leave science and take up art as my only profession i will either continue both or uh, medicine and science somehow comes first to me because curiosity is something which is very deeply ingrained in our character as a maybe the artist uh, the artist in me makes me more curious and the curiosity and the answers to everything so i'm first a scientist and an artist but i'm i would love to be both Uh, yeah, Nado Da Vinci was both an anatomist, a scientist, an engineer, and an artist for excellence. Uh, like uh, same answers. Like uh, I want to say also, uh, I want to say that like being a dermatologist, I got this chance that I can merge my art uh, in my uh, profession. Like I uh, like I had. Uh, i thought that i can become a tattoo artist and like uh, uh, like open a clinic for a tattoo artist and uh, like uh, and continue it with my profession as a dermatologist and also it helps uh, like dermatology is all about the visual perception so uh, like it's a art it's a art thing for me uh may i ask my question because my question was not for the post retirement perspective i was just asking dr saptrishi like he has uh, such interest since early childhood he has interest towards art so when did he like he decided that, that he should uh, take career in uh, like science uh, rather than uh, taking full career like he seems to be like he has learned uh, art work in some other institutes also so how Uh, that art has shifted to science. That I was asking, like not the post time, like the pre MBBS time, when this thing happened. Doctor Saptarishi, your mic is off. 
Dr. Saptarishi, your mic. Yeah. Yes. It's, can you hear me now? So, uh, so from a child, I used to read a lot of biographies of scientists, and I have read a little bit of biography of artists as well, but somehow I'm so deeply I identify with doctors, and particularly scientists, doctors, physician scientists, that I uh, wanted to be a physician scientist all along. But, uh, but of course, art was something that was like intrinsically, I, I was good at it, and I, I read about artists, and I, I knew a lot about artists, but I... I know, I somehow I know more about scientists and physicians than I know about doctors and artists. And uh, um, so it was never a question for me. I always wanted to be a doctor, a physician, scientist. And art, I always wanted to be my backup, uh, not backup, I mean, like a peaceful backup. Like, suppose when you get too stressed, then, I mean, of course, I mix art into my profession also. There are a lot of scope of art in my profession as well. But when I wanted to, when I would like to take a break from my profession, then art would be something that would give me peace, that would give me calm, um, that would uh, that would reorient, realign me to, re, that would enter me back to my uh, my normal uh, uh, state. In case sometimes, if my profession would be bearing down, but generally it has not happened. I saw I love my profession quite a lot. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Such a great explanation. Thank you. Sir, I would like to add something, even though I'm not one of the speakers. Uh, Dr. Deepak uh, used art as a way to uh, interact with others and maybe become less introverted and shy. Dr. Saptarishi enjoys art on the side uh, because uh, that is something that goes side by side with his interest, deep interest in science. And for me, uh, in third year MBBS, I realized that uh, this is not something I want to do because I don't like being in hospitals. I don't like being with sick people. And I told my parents, I want to leave this and study art. And they told me, you're just 12th pass. So you get a graduate degree and then you decide what you want to do. So when I gave my MD entrance, uh, this is just an interesting sideline. Uh, I chose anatomy actually... Uh, one choice, first choice was pathology, which my rank did not permit. But my second choice was anatomy, which I took in the first counseling uh, because it married two of my uh, active interests. One, uh, the interest in art and anatomy offers a lot of scope for drawing, gross anatomy in particular, but also microanatomy and embryology, neuroanatomy as well. And the second, my interest in talking a lot. In fact, when we were uh, we were uh, gearing up for this session. One of the things Dr. Pratap Sharan told me is that we should not only hear your voice. So anatomy offers so much teaching opportunity. So it combined both. And that's why I chose anatomy. I don't know if it interests anybody here, but I thought it would be an interesting sidelight. Absolutely, madam. Uh, this is uh, really uh, like... Anatomy is directly relevant, uh, like art is directly relevant to anatomy and also to some extent to dermatology as well. So there are these subjects like, for example, somebody who's a plastic surgeon. So they have to make somebody's look, face, face look aesthetic. Or somebody who's a, uh, like, uh, like Deepak, who has to make the skin look aesthetic. So for them, directly aesthetics is applied part of their profession and so goes for anatomy. But I also feel that... Uh, Aesthetics is not just restricted to visual aesthetics. Aesthetics is about elegance. So what is visual elegance can be elegance of a, like suppose when you are drawing a metabolic circuit or when you are drawing a scientific question as a puzzle and if you can make a process flow sheet and if you can find the gaps in the process, there also a sense of aesthetics can find the least path in a circuit of uh, like metabolic network or something. And so aesthetics can give you a, give you some grasp into very complicated science, some of which may not be very easily visualized, but a pseudo visualization sometimes helps in, in capturing concepts which are not exactly directly visualizable. So art helps science in many different ways. So, uh, and anatomy is definitely directly related to art and so is dermatology. Dr. Nia, would you like to take some more questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, like, uh, sir, sir has already provided a lot of insight on this question. But, uh, so I wanted to ask, like, how did art 
uh, influence how this how did this uh, part of your personality your interest in art uh, influence you as a physician also did becoming a physician so both of you had uh, were into art even before coming to med school right so uh, how did becoming a physician influence uh, your art style or coming to med school influence your art style so um, what i understand is so the two questions though so absolutely interlinked one is how my art influenced my medicine and how my medicine influenced my art right so uh, yes is that your question? okay so i i must say that uh, though uh, like i am also a musician and i have a good auditory memory but i am predominantly a visual learner and so like for example for medicine or for science you know there are you you know about these different modalities of learning visual learning auditory learning kinesthetic learning uh, other sensory learnings and all so like my for me the predominant mode of learning is the visual style and so like i try to make a summary picture or i try to look for like for example as a ug i started looking at the picture of in davidson where you know the whole human body is there and then for every disease there are like what all parts of the human body is uh is related that is one thing that has to always looking up and then for example uh, when i went into basic science there were all these different subjects like there was biochemistry there was molecular biology and there was cell biology I, somehow i picked up cell biology as a heavier topic for my masters and my postdoc because in cell biology there is a lot of topology like in my masters the subjects i had i had cellular engineering tissue engineering and i had uh, 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 developmental biology which had lot of morphogenesis you know the morphogenesis and ontogenesis in fact at one point of time i had started a journal inter institute journal club on developmental biology and one of the major focus that i tried to uh, go into was evo devo evo devo means evolution and developmental biology like if you guys remember the school age thing called hackels rule and all ontogeny repeats phylogeny there you get this uh, morphogenesis and so there are these shape So topology of of a cell or topology of a tissue or topology of an organ is a very interesting phenomena. Like for example, when you are doing anatomy section last year, the topology of the interior surface, all those are interesting. The speed at which you grasp the subject is probably much faster than any other learning style. So um, the art has definitely helped me imbibe a lot of science through this visual way. and because of this visual preference i have gone into such sciences which for example my current area of research is also related to cell biology where like how things cross cell membrane how when it comes over the complex comes outside the membrane so this topology of what is inside a cell what is outside when the membrane gets like uh, flipped upside inside out and all so this topology concepts are so easy to classify visual or visual style and so that's something how art has influenced my science and now the second part of the question how science has influenced my uh, my uh, my science or my profession has influenced my art so there are uh, many different ways one is a very direct way for example i am a blood banker currently so my job is includes motivating people to donate blood and to motivating counseling patients to understand what happens uh, why unnecessary transfusion should not be done so these kind of educating people needs a lot of material a lot of posters a lot of pamphlets a lot of reading material so make creating such reading material or even teaching students so creating teaching material and how to make it easily understandable either to the masses or to the students who should not be burdened with too much information if you are an artist then you can always have a aesthetics of like when you are making a slide whether it's too cluttered or not when you are making a material whether there is like whether you giving the information is the best possible way so art has directly helped my teaching and my uh, preaching to patients and in one way that is one direct way for example uh, holding poster competition is part of my profession because we have like this kind of blood drives donor drives that is one now also art has influenced my profession in uh, like for example i uh, when i went to the us uh, i went to stanford first and uh, there was uh, like i was doing research on angiogenesis in the endometrium and i needed some uh, some insights about the basic biology basic pathogenesis of certain diseases so i was looking for a pathogen a pathologist among our seniors so i contacted the several people i got in touch with professor vinay kumar in 
uh, University of Chicago. I got in touch with Professor Gurdip Sidhu. So initially, the person I was most in touch with was uh, Professor Gurdip Sidhu, whom I came across in the Yahoo email group. And uh, Professor Sidhu was really uh, like uh, a, he was called a Renaissance man. So in New York, when he came, like he did so many subjects, he wrote books, he wrote novels. He uh, he was a very he was an excellent photographer, an excellent painter. Uh, he looked at my paintings and he said, "Okay, I'm mostly a photographer. I'm not a painter uh, like you." But uh, he was, I knew he was a painter as well. So he was an excellent painter. He was an excellent story writer. He was an excellent pathologist. In fact, he was the one who discovered HIV. Um, he he was he has one of the claim to fame of discovering HIV because his electron microscopy laid in New York in 1981 when. HIV came, it was affecting gay men. You know, it was called initially gay-related immunodeficiency. The people who eventually discovered HIV, they didn't know about HIV. He was the one who gave crash course to all those people. So his electron microscopy and these things gave led to the discovery of HIV. So this person, Dr. Gurdip Sidhu, he became one of my mentors. And even uh, he went to his home and uh, like for my interviews also, I stayed with him and he introduced me to world's top most pathologists. So my art actually helped me get into like get in touch with such big famous doctors and like because they also had that uh, art as a hobby. And so though I exchanged 400 emails in one year with Professor Gudip Sidhu, and uh, most of them were academic, but because he was also an artist, so we could uh, touch a different chord. We could uh, you know we could bond very well. And so this additional dimension that makes us more human. Just uh, small talks or just too much academic talks. Both extremes don't bond people completely. But if you have these additional dimensions, then like suppose if you go for a residency interview, you can always carry along your portfolio or something. And like when you are doing US interviews, nobody wants to listen only to academics. They want to listen to other aspects of your personality. And so if you can show them certain other dimensions of your personality, they think that, okay, you will be a good colleague for the next few years. So you will not be a boring personality. So you have to be able to display all round personality as well, in addition to being good at academics. I, uh, I think, so this being an artist gave me an all round personality and helped me in my academics. Uh, uh, so uh, in my case, uh, art influenced my academics early in my uh, life. Like in small towns, uh, people used to say, "Is ki art achhi hai, isko biology dilana chahiye." So, like from there, I got influenced with people that uh, take biology also. Even though uh, I was less interested in biology and more in physics, so I took uh, both side, both maths and uh, like biology, and ended up in uh, AIMS. Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> like. Uh, uh, during my uh, like choosing the uh, residency, uh, I wanted to choose a branch uh, in which I get uh, I can get time uh, for other uh, for art and other uh, activities. So uh, like uh, uh, I uh, like from my family, uh, people were saying that I take medicine, but uh, I took dermatology so that I can get uh, more time. I was afraid that I couldn't get time. In medicine, so I ended up in dermatology, and uh, also during my exam times, uh, most of my sketching and paintings were during the exam times. So, kind of it is the stress relieving things, and uh, like like my close ones knows that when I am sketching, uh, like uh, like sketching lot of sketches, uh, they think that I am stressed. So, like it is like that. Uh, You've uncovered another very important aspect of art serving as a de-stressor, uh, particularly for a medical student. It's a very, it's a very effective. I completely agree with this. In fact, the only oil paintings I have made were made during my pre-cross exam. Earlier we used to have three cross. Now we have four. Uh, so I produced three oils because I had to go through three cross exams during my previous years. It's definitely art is definitely a wonderful way to be stress. I totally agree with you. Agreed, ma'am. Agreed. Uh, like most of uh, like uh, somehow we do, uh, create a lot of art before our exams in order to de stress. Um, okay, so we have got some beautiful comments from YouTube. Um, 
and uh, another thing that a lot of us want to know is how did uh, doc both dr saptashi and dr deepak manage their time between making art and their academics so a very good question and i uh, must appreciate the relevance of the question so by the way let me tell you that uh, in my time versus in your time the time management to do the art that we did in our campus or like uh, your i should not say your time uh, my current time it's say like you know post google time i must say that like you know pre internet and post internet time the time management is was entirely different so even the prioritization was important then and now also but the priority sequence was different in my time it was the the problem was to get access to more material that we could convert into art so i had to really struggle in bb dikshit library there were only two or three pockets of books which had art material in it so i knew like i had to really from the very beginning the moment i got this these assignments in my first year i really uh, browsed through the whole library and i knew exactly which book is where and the book has which pictures and like for example when i'm making that lotus for the saraswati puja or when i'm making a swan i knew which books have a picture of a swan and because i don't have the luxury of uh, you know uh, of a huge art library i have only bibi dikshit library or else i have to go to maybe a long distance away to uh, british commission library or some other library or maybe i have to go to a market and spend money to buy a book because in those days there is no internet this is a pre internet era also not just pre google era there was internet in cfac and there was only telnet which was ms dos based so the, our concept of internet was like there was not even windows in the initial period there was uh, like windows was barely coming that time and google was uh, created but google didn't reach us so in those days we had to really struggle for hard copy books we had to really plan very hard otherwise you know this was not easy managing time and doing studies was really challenging particularly for people who had taken additional responsibilities and that responsibility did one good thing if i didn't have taken those responsibility i would not have realized the challenge the moment i took a responsibility of audio kosiki or the particularly the soccer sick audio kosiki was still easy because there was only one or two pockets of time where i had to really go to the auditorium and do all those large scale art but rest of the year it was not so hectic but in the soccer sick the moment i became soccer sick i realized from the very beginning that is going to be challenging and the perception of the challenge really made me do a quite a few breakthrough which even now when i look back it looks really uh, like how did i manage to do that so i actually went to all my seniors who were in campus who have been soccer sick i took a notebook to them i sat down with them and i forced them to tell me tell me exactly what it involves to do my job what exactly are the jobs what exactly are the minimal jobs what additional things can i do how did you do it what are the challenges how did you manage time i actually asked them this question also and i don't know if uh, some of them might remember meeting like I, one of them i met on the train also like uh, there was uh, one bhaiya his name, nickname was bhaiya uh, so he was going uh, uh, on train and i caught him on the train i took my notebook out so that was one so i had to take feedback i had to take uh, make notes i had to uh, divide the time so what i so the key word is planning so to manage time be it today be it then the main key word is that you have to plan and by plan what i mean is that first you make a list of things then you prioritize then you plot it then you spread it out in your calendar then you create internal deadlines otherwise if you wait for the final deadline you will never deliver things so create internal deadlines and generally internal deadlines you keep tight and you keep failing so every time you fail you have to create hope hope is a habit hope is a practice hope doesn't come by birth so you will yes. get to situation where things will look hopeless but you have to force yourself to feel hopeful and only if you force yourself to feel hopeful will you actually get hope and once you get hope then only you deliver things to yourself and to the world and our job is to you know serve our job is to create more art our job was to create more deliverables and we had to really plan and even now we have to plan but the strategy of the plan will be different but the essence is the same to get time to make time you have to like uh, make plan i think that's art my gives art gives hope and keeps the hope alive and dr mandi dr saptarishi i totally uh, understand what you're talking about because you are 1996 batch entry and i am 1988 mbbs entry my my graduation from mackey not to dance i joined here as a faculty so 
the present generation, Dr. Deepak is 2010 bad, Dr. Riya is 2015 batch, and many of the listeners on this program today probably don't realize the challenges of the pre Google era that you pointed out very effectively. The post Google era, I think once Google came and once internet was at your place, information, access at your fingertips, the challenges are not to be sucked into that. Because so much of your time goes in just surfing the net, that is the challenge for uh, the present time. Uh, earlier, the struggle was to get access. Now the challenge is to manage your time with that unlimited access. Uh, now uh, the challenge is like, uh, like we used to search, search for the art material and uh, like uh, inspiration to draw, but uh, like it is hard to select what to make. Uh, like like there is so much stuff to do, and uh, we got confused what to what to draw, what to make, and like a lot of the time goes into the surfing and uh, selecting what to make. Yeah, I, I like, get. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean I'm not interrupting. I'm actually repeating what you're saying. That uh, the current challenge. We, we got lucky, me and Dr. Ritu, we got lucky that we didn't have one challenge. We didn't have the distraction part of so much resource. Like when you have abundance of resource, over abundance of resource, then you yes. have to discriminate. And it's very difficult to not get distracted. For uh, curious minds like artists, you will definitely get distracted by so much resource that you will be like lost in the ocean of resource. So the new challenge is... Too much access. That's the thing. Yes, agreed. Like, uh, we have that the audience has shared. Yes, from, would you like to project some of the art? Yes, ma'am. Uh, share, uh, ma'am. Right now, uh, okay. Or should we finish with the Q&A first? Absolutely, finish with the Q&A first. But I think you will need to okay. have an eye on the clock because uh, we have yes, already our one and a half hours. But uh, do wind up your question answer session and project. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. So another question is, uh, have uh, uh, any of you ever considered commercializing or exhibiting your art? So has it ever occurred to you? Have you ever uh, thought of doing it? Uh Commercialization, no, but uh, like, see, there are two things. One is commercializing for, for just regular profit, small profit kind of thing, which is no, the answer is no for me. But uh, if the answer is uh, about, about networking and enterprise, then the answer is uh, definitely I'm interested to network with, uh, with other artists who will be real praisers of art. Like, for example, you know, I've, I've never got uh, less um, praise. Rather, actually, I was generally flooded with praise wherever I went. But the problem is when the praise came from actual artists, then the amount of amount of pleasure and satisfaction you get out of that real appraisal, that, uh, for example, uh, when I met my wife, she's also a physician scientist. And when she gives me appraisal about something, she will not flatter me by taking, I mean, by entitling me that things which are wrong, she will not say, oh, that's also perfect. She will tell me what are wrong and what are right and what is best about it. So that kind of balanced appraisal comes only from real professionals or real real people who really understand art. And so, uh, for example, my wife uh, also appreciates, I mean, she's good at both uh, realistic as well as uh, abstract art. And I was somebody who initially I didn't, I used to not appreciate abstract art that much. I used to rather sort of look down upon the abstract bit, but then I realized that people like Picasso and all, they were actually realists. Even my favorite artist, uh, Chuck Close, who was a hyper-realist, he actually later on modified his style to incorporate some abstract in it. So I realized that abstract art actually gives you a more global understanding, more global intelligence. And to appreciate the abstract part, you need to really think in a more global way. And so uh, I would love to interact with real artists and and uh, be involved in enterprise of a global or higher level, but uh, but that too definitely uh, involves sustainability. To do any enterprise, you need sustainability. You need uh, support, monetary support, and other kinds of resources. But 
but uh, i would not be interested in uh, small kind of profits like selling one or two single pieces of art just to make little bit of money would not be something i'd be interested but if there is something sustainable something something enterprising and something which also involves service to a lot of people that service part which attracts me but not the small benefit part uh, art exhibitions uh, with uh, so the uh i tried to i tried to sell one of my uh, one or two of my uh, like artworks like uh, the backdrop i made uh, which was uh, like uh, very uh, i i was very fond of it so i thought like it will lost in the hostel campus so i tried to sold it uh, but because uh, i didn't have any uh, like connections and uh, interaction problem was there so i was never able to uh, sell it or give it to anyone uh other than that i also tried to make uh, like sketches uh, like lot of people requested me to make sketches and i got frustrated that like everyone is telling me that make my sketches so i told them that like pay me and i'll <laughs> i'll make your sketch but that was also like uh, like it was also unsuccess- unsuccessful like so like in future plan uh, like i wanted to do it like i want to do uh, like uh, become a tattoo artist like like a side business to uh, a dermatologist like remove uh, remove tattoo or make tattoo so i can do both so i thought that so maybe at that plan can work as a dermatologist yes making tattoos can work just as well as moving them but maybe the suggestion of having exhibitions the artists in every batch may take it up an art exhibition every year why not exhibit their works not for commercial reasons but just for exhibiting the talent that's a good idea yeah in fact we we do it frequently in ms jodhpur we hold exhibitions for our art club like all the art club products that are that are made not just art art and craft so for those we hold exhibitions and we try to hold it somewhere near the opd so that we get both kind of audience we get uh, the audience from the educated and like doctor community as well as we get audience from the from the patients and sometimes actually like and that's when actually when when somebody thinks that okay my artwork will be seen by somebody who's a lay person then their thought process actually changes and they try to make something meaningful which will be meaningful to somebody who's uneducated and uh, and of course uh, for uh, exhibition i think when i was at aims or other places i had held small exhibitions even here also but another part of the exhibition is having exhibition in art gallery so if you are an artist and if you aspire to be a successful commercial artist as well then you should definitely get in touch with real professional artists and you should try to send some of your artwork to professional galleries and receive receive comment from people who are willing to buy so only people who want to invest money they will give you real feedback of which per, what it is worth and i have sometimes received occasionally that kind of a feedback that what exactly is the value of one or two pieces of painting and then i realized okay so my painting was worth something so that can, and also along with that comes the justification why it is worth exactly that much why not more why the, why not less because of that stakeholder that person is a stakeholder so that person will tell you the real appraisal critical appraisal Yes, sir. Uh, there is one question that is directed to uh, Dr. Deepak, and that would be the last question for today. Uh, it is from Pooja, and she wants to ask that although uh, everyone does not get the opportunity to show their hobbies so easily at such a large stage, although some of the shy, uh, although some of the shy nature of the person, they have personality and in general acceptance by their colleagues may also play a role in that how much effort it required from your side to express your artwork to your colleagues uh this question on that there your entry uh so uh like uh in expressing the artwork most of the uh, like uh, i never tried to express it uh, myself like hardly like most of the artworks were expressed by my friends like uh, when i uh, uh, made my sketch uh, my uh, 
like self portrait so like my friends uh, told everyone that like deepak made this and like when i used to draw in my hostel room so uh, uh, like my friends told that uh, other people that uh, like deepak used to draw this uh, so that's how like friend ha- friends helped me uh, uh, to like uh, in various ways to present my artwork uh, to lots of people so uh like uh it's not uh, uh like when people come to uh, uh like us like then we can show like uh, our artwork uh but uh like without a uh, friend's help like it's difficult uh, to like project and like uh, show artwork to others I also take this opportunity to mention that Mukul uh, has made the post uh, has uh, has never claimed a credit for what he made so i guess uh, he must be a very hard working but a shy person and we must uh, really uh, uh, applaud yeah. the art that was created even though he never claims to be even an artist he doesn't say he's an artist but what he has created the digital art is really fabulous it's really an impressionistic art and and he has created a real impressionistic effect of like magic the two and i don't know how exactly he created the lighting in the ems building whether it's a photo montage or actual thing but the digital art he has done that needs a lot of aesthetic sense so he is a true artist and he must be congratulated or i think he might have made the both the poster and the invitation artwork is exceptional beautiful and uh, he's also yes He's also compiled a PDF of uh, of uh, the artwork which uh, some of the uh, members of the audience have sent, and uh, I think this is going to be projected now. Uh, so while we talk, we can continue our discussion. The PDF will go on in the back. Uh, so yeah, please. Uh, so is my is my screen uh, visible? yes it is uh so yeah so uh these are some of the artworks that uh, were sent to us um uh so this is by dr ayushi chaturvedi she is also from batch of 2015 uh uh and uh, and then uh so dr virendra singh he is from batch of uh, 1987 and he has he used to be the audi decor sakhi at his time and he has sent us some beautiful uh, pen sketches uh uh some po- be- beautiful portraits that he has made so uh, uh so as we can see yeah devanand clearly yeah yeah very life like And the contrast is very professional. Like the strokes, he has got light strokes and dark strokes without smudging or without over inking, uh, like without smudging anywhere. It's really neat and, and such wonderful contrast. Very professional. Yes. Even without using color, he's managed to indicate the light eye color of Rajkumar. Right, right. Beautiful. Very beautiful. So this is one of his. Uh, this is one of the uh, works by, I mean, from R. K. Lakshman, inspired by R. K. Lakshman, and he actually says that he had started painting after the death of R. K. Lakshman. Oh my God! Spiritual connection. Yeah. The glossy yes. metal. Yes. The murti, the shine is is nice. It's metallic. Yeah, the metallic, the texture is conveyed nicely. Beholding a work of art is such an enriching, rewarding uh, experience. And today we've had such a surplus of exceptional artwork that we've had the pleasure to behold. It's been such a wonderful morning seeing oh. this. Now uh, look at this! Wow. Oh, the, this is the water. Uh, so this is by dr neha nitya darshini who is uh, a gr in the department of microbiology and she has sent us some exceptional artworks so uh, the ophthalmologist can use very well this is beautiful 
I also it's okay. Ria, are you going to show your rangolis? Uh, your... Sir, just a second. Um, I suppose I'll have to. Rangolis are also fabulous. I mean, like I just saw a couple of them, and like that uh, that lady with one side uh, um, that mushroom and the other side flower and all on her hair. That, can you show that one here? Dr. Ritu, would you like to show your stress art? While Ria is fixing her uh, screen, you can meanwhile show your oil paintings, Dr. Ritu. Oil or anything that you like. Hmm? You, your screen is, your, your sound is muted. Ma'am, your sound is muted. Yes, now. Can you see my screen? Yes, now we can. So this is some of my stress art, not so good. I was mm -hmm. actually an amateur trying out different media practically on my own. So this, this is one oil on canvas I did. I think this was the second prof when I did this oil on canvas. The okay. background I'm still not very satisfied with. But I did enjoy doing the uh, dress and the ornaments of the Radha Krishna uh, figures. Uh, that I think I got. Uh, okay, because I have not learned art from anywhere. I have just been drawing since a child, since I was a child. And uh, this, particularly this, uh, I used to love uh, browsing through albums full of Rajasthani paintings. And particularly, I enjoyed the way they got the transparent clothing material. Uh, and uh, the, the material uh, that they were wearing to show through the dupattas, the, trans, uh, the translucent or transparent dupattas. So I tried that many times, but in this painting, I was able to achieve some degree of it. Although the background is something which needs uh, a bit of improvement. So I have these paintings at my parental uh, home and uh, I'll probably improve that. So it was done on canvas uh, initially and then it was uh, framed later. So this is one oil on canvas. This is another one in the Rajasthani style. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite topics. So this is actually a copy of a similar uh, painting I saw on a greeting card uh, with some modifications. So here you can see the mosque and you can see the temple. And, uh, you know, our Indian brand of secularism is very close to my heart. So art is one of my hobbies and the other is writing. So regularly I write on these themes, particularly in these times when intolerance is mounting in the world. So I thought this showed very nicely, very beautifully, uh, the theme of uh, coexisting of different cultures together that our country represents. And uh, what I was happy in this, there were many things I was not so happy with, but the one thing which I was happy in this painting was the Rajasthani style of making uh, uh, of making uh, these trees and the leaves. I enjoyed this a lot. So this I thought I got well in this one, this particular one. Okay. Now the one oil painting which I'm a little proud of is this one, which I sort of modified from okay. an album showcasing uh, paintings, uh, paintings which uh, are there in various museums at Florence, Italy. And one of the themes which is very common to most of the artists, several artists have made paintings on that theme, is Annunciation. You know, the, the adoration of Christ by Madonna. I modified that 
and uh, made one of my own like the face is original the folds of the dress are uh, improvised as well and the backdrop is improvised as well uh, so i don't have the imprint on the stone here but i've just improvised it to show somebody in prayer so this is uh, inspired from those paintings and some aspects i got correct but there are still many lacunae that i can see in this painting uh, i had to redo the face couple of times each of the hands couple of times before i got it uh, to some degree of my satisfaction of course i am not a professional artist and i am in no way in the league that our speakers are so this is one which i enjoy doing but this took 5 years to make actually if i painted it i was not satisfied the oil dries up oil offers you that leeway then i repainted parts of it this painting was made millimeter by millimeter it was made very slowly over my mbbs years all 5 five, five and a half years i took to actually complete this painting so this is uh, close to my heart and this one was that very fast because this is actually acrylic paint uh, on canvas so this was done in space of i think i completed it in two or three days uh, whereas acrylic and fabric paint doesn't have the kind of depth that can that oil will afford you but it's very satisfying it gets done very fast and again this was improvised with something i saw on a greeting card you know just rural ladies at work and chit chatting so this was done very fast the color schemes are beautiful ma'am and your uh, like the transparent texture that you got in the film and the and the and the cloth texture the the soft texture of the cloth you have captured very well with krishna the expression in krishna is really precious the, like you have got a yeah. krishna excited and all so the faces the dresses i copy from rajasthani paintings for the faces of radha and krishna are fairly original those i i improvise by doing it a couple of times you know the first time i did it did right then i let it dry and then painted it again so i got it uh, all right uh, by the third or fourth try uh, uh, i have been sent the pdf that was going on which got interrupted so can you uh, share my screen and i can yes uh, yes uh, hello uh, so I, i sorry my connection actually got lost for some time in between i i could do it i could continue doing it uh, okay. from where i left. yeah sure continue yeah, so yeah. i'll i'll can someone make me the presenter so that yeah yeah right right uh sir has made you the presenter i think yes yes ma'am uh, so yeah so we continue from the we had seen till here bhavik bansal's uh, photograph of oscar's lake and um, so next we have uh, uh, these two sketches by avin anthony from the batch of 2019 uh, so we have a sketch of the soft furry texture of the head you know the texture is one of the hardest thing to get in a sketch and so yes, the texture yeah yeah please do continue yes So, so the so the 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 uh, ear the ear is stiff and the hair is fluffy and soft and the, the cloth is really like a, a very thin cloth so all this the texture effect is very hard and and that's a very successful rendering of the texture and in the ear you can see the ear veins and those things so it's it's very nicely done wonderful and this from star wars i the character from star wars i forget his name yes ma'am yoda ma'am yoda Yeah, yeah. I would like to just master Yoda. Yeah, because you know he was one of the prize winners. I think uh, we organized uh, in collaboration with Time. We organized an anatomy art competition last year. Uh, I think it was November last year, or maybe one month here and there. Uh, and uh, the response of the undergraduates was tremendous. Even the anatomy postgraduates. they uh, uh we sat in the micro anatomy uh, micro anatomy lab and everyone do these anatomy diagrams everyone had to draw one anatomy diagram of their choice and i think this is one of the prize winning entries where the inter intermuscular spaces at the shoulder are exhibited uh so we organized this event and we are thinking of making it an yearly event uh so time organized that event for us last year so even if we don't get any sponsors i think we'll make it a, a yearly event 
uh, an anatomy art competition for the first year batch of MBBS students every year. And I have all the artwork. I actually am in possession of all the artwork that was produced in that one morning session, Saturday morning session, by the UGs and PTs of the 2020-21 batch, the current batch, which is yet to appear for the prof exam, delayed on account of COVID-19. These are beautiful muscles. The yes, muscles are really glossy and the insertion is, is like white muscle and the rest is red muscle. It's beautiful. Go to the next. Uh, so next we have a couple of posters and memes by Dr. Omar Afros. So these are the posters he had made for his pressures party and teacher's day. Uh, this is a card for, for teacher's day. And uh, yeah, here are a couple of posters he had made for some of the uh, protests. Uh, yeah, his posters are quite, uh, uh, yeah. impact quite well. The, the lettering yeah. and the overall, overall balance is it's really good. And here are a few memes <laughs> that he has made, so, yeah. <laughs> That's good, funny. <laughs> Uh, so these are a couple of more memes and another poster by him. Again, uh, don't divide us. This theme is very close to my heart. Uh, you know, I contribute articles for every single issue of hybrid use since I joined. Before that, uh -huh. I used to do. I used to contribute articles for the Mamsi magazine, Spandan. And uh, this year, the article which I contributed is on this theme. It's, uh, I titled it uh, An Alien in New Delhi and uh, recounted my experiences of being a citizen of Delhi since my growing years and now in the New Delhi that I failed to recognize on account of the intolerance. It's a good poster. Beautiful, Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, yes, these, these are again a couple of posters and Nice sketchy lines. Uh, uh, this is a very beautiful wall painting by our junior Sri Laya from the batch of 2017. So this is something, this is one of her um, uh, like a lockdown arts of which she has made in the wall of her house, I suppose. Yeah, this is, this is really nice and neat and, and so colorful. Like balance of the color is not easy. It, it's very easy to clutter it up, but it's kept very nicely neat. Even despite using so many colors, it's not cluttered. Yes, sir. Dr. Saktarishi, it's not just that you are an exceptional artist, but I think uh, if there's any art appreciation club, you should be a you should be the president because you appreciate art very well. You really know what to. For everything, you have something beautiful and very incisive to say. Um, these are a couple of other uh, entries which were anonymous, I suppose. So, yeah, I think these are finger paintings. And, uh, yeah. Finger painting is exceptionally hard. Uh, I've like, seen people do finger painting. I have not done many myself, but it's quite hard. Like Using a pencil is so easy and using a finger is... And using a mouse is even worse. If you have to do a digital paint with a mouse, my wife manages it, but I don't manage with a mouse. But finger is something in between. Finger, finger painting is harder, way harder than a pencil. So they've got the colors. This is, this is our last exhibit for today. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to show your uh, Rangoli? Or yes, sir. I, I, I would love to show a couple of my paintings. So, uh, uh, so uh, this is one of the watercolors that I had made. And uh, so this, uh, I was having a strong urge to go on a trip during the lockdown. But then uh, yes. such My was screen. the case that it's not, it's not possible, right? Ria, your screen is not come yeah. up yet. Your screen is right now white. My screen has not come up yet. Is it, oh, is it, is it there now? The is it, okay. It, but it's uh, white. It's an okay. uh, now, 
it's no it seems to be untitled notebook page uh, two of yeah and it's it's still is it still white yes it's a page two of six of your untitled okay. notebook okay uh I don't know uh, why this is happening. Just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, is it there yet? I am not sure. No. Is it there yet? No. Okay. Then I suppose. Uh, Yeah, are these the same that you sent in the uh, in the group in the KWCOS uh, twelve group? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These are the same that I had uh, sent on the group the other day. Uh, the uh, the watercolor painting of Tosh Valley. So it's fine. I mean, we could so, I could I show you more later. Can I show uh, from my computer? Yeah. Can, uh, uh, Ria, you can try presenting again. I've made you present. Okay, 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 sir. I, I'll try again. So, is it? Uh, I'll uh, share your screen. So, is, is it visible now? Uh, your screen, my is, screen is getting shared. Uh, no, your screen is still not shared. Share your screen. Okay, my screen is still not shared, uh, but no. this one shows that now sharing your screen. I am not sure. Let it come. Yeah, I think the doctor after she has the painting, so he could show. He was project. Yeah. Okay, so let me start with uh, Ria's uh, Rangoli. Just hold on. Let me just. Scroll up to the right screen. Okay. So, can uh, how do I share my screen? Uh, I uh, think doc, uh, Dr. Pratap Sharan has. Yeah. Okay. You know, at the bottom of your screen, there's a my camera screen. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We can see the screen now. So this, well, this is a really an exceptional rangoli in the sense that uh, in, uh, it looks almost like a watercolor, like the way she has given the, like the, the chin. In the chin, you have the shadow of the lip. The lip is glossy and uh, like the kaleidoscopic, uh, colorful, spec like the spectacles, the color balance she has got. Without cluttering up, without uh, like uh, messing up it, it was very, very easy to mess it up. There is so much content. It's really dense. And she has really got it beautifully. Look at the petals. Can you see? And her, uh, sir, it is dull. To get it's sharp out the rangoli is very tough, actually. To blend yes. colors, I think, is easier. But to get sharp outlines, well-defined outlines in rangoli are very tough. And such big ones is at that. Sir, what do you think, Ria? Yeah. So it's a, it's a team effort and... Uh, the credit goes to the whole fine arts team who made this rangoli. We made it over two days and it turned out pretty well. Yeah. Really well. Like you look at the background, the softness of the background. See the sharp margin versus sharp. the soft margin. It's, it's wonderful. Really? Like the softness of the background and the sharpness of the flower. That flower is exquisite. It's yes. so really good job, Ria. Congratulations to the to you and the team. Like you know, the team leader is has a vision. The the team some some of the team may be like really focused on a fragment, but the whole at least one person has to have the whole vision. Your vision is really yes. good. Look at the mushroom; it's really exquisite. And then let me. Well, I don't have this downloaded, so I have to browse through. So these are actually uh, uh, okay. So this is Ria. So look at this, yeah. uh, like uh, this is Haragauri, like the uh, Ardhanarishwar. So on the left hand side, do you see the, the feminine face as a as a slightly more rounded rounded jaw, whereas on the right hand side, the blue part of the blue side is more masculine and the orange part is more feminine. But it's not just the color, the shape of the lip, the shape of the lower jawline, the shape of the 
width of the forehead. It's beautifully done and very subtle, or the very nice. Very subtle, yes. And this water color, it's what I really like is the fresh color on the tin, the tin shades. Like you know, a new tin shade is only blue, and once it gets rusted, it starts getting rusty. So these are two rusty sheets and one blue sheet in between. So very beautifully done with very minimal strokes, very fresh watercolor. And the bricks, very nicely simplified bricks, bricks showing up in between cement. And there is this, uh, I think, some electric wire running. Oh, the, uh, the the in the backdrop are beautifully achieved. Beautiful watercolor, very successful watercolor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. I, I, Is that that's anything? So, yeah, that's it. I, that, that is it, sir. I suppose uh, that is it. It was amazing uh, uh, to hear both of you speak. And uh, thank you to our lovely audience for being here. It, it has been a very beautiful a visual treat to all of us, I suppose. And we hope to have more such discussions in the future and uh, thank you uh, also i would like to thank the uh, other organizers like mukul arushi uh, and the rest of the team for uh, making this successful and uh, um, dr pratap and dr aditi for coordinating the whole thing yeah thank you I, it was amazing I, we are really blessed to have been a part of this amazing visual feast that we got to witness today and uh, I'm really grateful to Dr. Pratap Sharan and I'm grateful to the two speakers for showcasing their wonderful art in various media. I'm really grateful to Ria and uh, to the backup team Mukul for producing such amazing posters, artwork for the whole event and uh, Dr. Aditi and everyone who participated uh, as audience or as speakers or as organizers, I'm really grateful. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to actually interact with such great artists and great professionals. Thank you. Thank you all. And particularly also all those who sent their artwork. It was really a visual treat to all of us. It was really yeah. wonderful. All the art that we received were really, really exceptional and really appreciate sharing them. And thank you all, and thank you the thank to the organizers and Dr. Ritu, Dr. Pratap, Dr. Aditi, and um, and Ria and uh, Dr. Deepak. It was really wonderful talking today, and it was very enjoyable. And Mukul, Mukul, of course. Thank you, Mukul. Thank you. I think we'll close the meeting. Yeah, I think we'll close the meeting. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mandel and Dr. Deepak uh, for uh, taking out time and for uh, like the number of times that you have joined us in the preparatory meeting. It has been one of the most enthusiastic uh, sessions. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Professor Ritu Saigal and Ria for, uh, for, uh, for the, being the hosts to this talk show, or it was more of a visual show in certain ways. And yes. uh, to Mukul and all the participants who shared their artwork with us and uh, to the TWCOS team. So we'll stop here and we hope to continue the conversation in other for us. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.